Hello everybody and welcome to The War Room. This one is for the first event of the year and the first event of Fight Island 3, Holloway v. Cater. Okay, where do I start with this one? So th there are a lot of reasons why this is a fun matchup and an interesting matchup uh, and a matchup that is much more suitable to Max Holloway's style than Volkanovski. First of all, let's just let's just address where they are both in their careers, right? Max Holloway will start there because he's much easier to wrap up. Um, so we'll go back to. I'm gonna sip a seat. We'll go back to August 2013 when he lost to Conor McGregor by decision. It was ten fights into his career then, so you can imagine what that was like. <clears throat> so he loses to McGregor. Then he beats Will Shope, Andre Feely, Clay Collard, Akira Khorasani, Cole, uh, Cole Miller, Cub Swanson, Charles Oliveira, which was a neck injury. I remember him going down against the fence. Uh, Jeremy Stevens and uh, Ricardo Lamas. Then he won the interim featherweight championship against Pettis. And then he unified it against Aldo, then beat Aldo again, and then beat Brian Ortega. Then he went up to lightweight and obviously... Uh, lost to Poirier over the distance. Came back down to 145, beat Frankie Edgar, and then he's got two losses to Volkanovski, a unanimous where he lost his belt and a split where he wasn't able to get it back. Okay, <clears throat> so why why is this a different fight for him than the Volkanovski ones? Because Volkanovski started out at a decent pace. He set, he set a good pace at the first round in both fights. Um, he forced Max Holloway to work in the rounds where Max Holloway likes to warm up. Um, I've discussed it previously on Inside the Octagon, um, breaking down one of Max Holloway's fights. And which one was it? I think it was the Brian Ortega fight. So what I find interesting about Max Holloway's style is that he gets he gets more active as the fights go on, which is not necessarily surprising. But his statistics of success also increase as the fight goes on. So if he lands you know, five of 10 punches in the first round, he'll land 10 of 15 in the second round. And, you know, his percentage of success goes up e each time, each round. That's good for Cater because he's very similar. And I'll come I'll come back to that in a moment. If you look at the Volkanovski fights, Volkanovski set a pace. He, he forced Max Holloway to work, especially in those first two rounds where he really doesn't want to. So then in the rounds where Max Holloway starts to come on strong, third, fourth, and fifth, where he starts to show his championship caliber, he was already kind of beaten up and slowed down behind on the scorecards. Um, so stylistically, I don't think Volkanovski was, was a good matchup for him. There's also the threat of constantly having to defend takedowns, which you know, Volkan Volkanovski offers, and I don't think Calvin Cater does. Certainly not in the same way. Um, and then if we switch over to Calvin Cater, so he's he's never been dropped in the UFC. He's only lost in the UFC by decision. He's got one rear naked choke loss in his fourth fight back in the old Elite XC days. Um, um, but yeah, a split decision loss back in 2010. And then in the UFC... Came in, made a debut against Andre Feely, winning by decision. Uh, stopped Shane Burgos in the in the third round. Lost a decision to Moicano, which I will come back to. Uh, beat Fishgold and Lamas, two good wins there, both in the first round. Lost a decision to Magomed Sharapov, and then he stopped Jeremy Stevens, and then has got that uh, five round unanimous decision over Dan Ego. So positives are that he's coming off a five round decision win over another highly uh, skilled contender in this division. Um, so that sets him in, in a good position for Max Holloway, who can set a pace and does certainly build his pace as the fight goes on. We know that he's got five rounds of gas and um, and that he can work hard into those fourth and fifth rounds. Um, stopping Jeremy Stevens shows that he can take a punch and, and land a shot. And that, those elbows that he finished him with were beautiful, really, really nice, which may be a good technique to utilize against Max Holloway. Um, I'll, I'll touch on it right now. So Max Holloway, <clears throat> as as he picks up his pace, he starts to crowd people. He starts to get these wild flurries together. You think back to the Lammers fight where he's chasing him down up against the fence. And he's going bam, 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 hook to the body. And then he's switching through stance and he's throwing these wild, beautiful, varied combinations. Most of the time when people are fighting him, when they see that coming towards them, they're moving back or, or they're covering up. Calvin Cater's got very good footwork. He's got he's, he's got very patient 
approach to the fight. He's got a very skilled game and he's got very good decision making. So he understands the value of being able to give a, a bit of ground and then stand your ground to, to bang. And with Max Holloway come crashing forward, if you can back up for the first sort of four or five shots and stay covered and out of range, that's going to encourage Max Holloway to continue moving forward. Then Cater digs his heels in and starts throwing those elbows where Max Holloway's momentum is going to carry him onto them. Um, it's the old, you remember the scene out of Braveheart when they've got the cavalry charging forward and they've got all the all the spikes on, on the floor, you know, you let the the enemy impale himself. And the fact that Max Holloway does start to flurry, especially in the later rounds, maybe something that Calvin Cater can utilize those elbows um, against. Okay, so the Moicano and the Magomed Sharapov fights. Both unanimous decision losses and both three round decisions. Now, let me just skip over to the, the UFC stats page and pull up that fight. So, <laughs> first of all, Moicano. It was this was a three round fight. First of all, Moicano worked worked hard in this in this fight. It was you know he, he threw two hundred strikes, over two hundred strikes. He landed one hundred and sixteen. Uh, Calvin Cater threw one hundred and forty strikes, which is still a good work rate, but he only landed forty one, so twenty nine percent success rate, and that's partly because you know he he kind of builds into the rounds. You know he he gets better as the fight goes on. Um, whereas, you know, Moicano, although, you know, <laughs> although he's, uh, he's moved up in the division now, when he was in this division, he was, he was a top contender. You know, he was only, he was only beaten by the best, the, the likes of Brian Ortega. Um, and, and Cater hung in there with him. He, he, he wasn't particularly beaten up or hurt necessarily. He just, he wasn't working hard enough. He wasn't, he didn't have the same kind of output. And, and I think that in this fight with Max Holloway, they, they, they kind of build in a way that mirrors each other in the way that they they approach the fight. You know, they're both in the first round. It'll be a, very much a feeling out process. I'd expect Max Holloway to test his range a little bit with a few shots, but not really commit to anything. And Calvin Cater will try a couple of couple of strong punches. W one thing he was using against Dan Ige, which was really nice, was a long, he was kind of like a lazy long overhand right to a lead left hook or, or lead uppercut. Um, he's got very good long range boxing. You know, he, he does really fully utilize the extent of his reach, um, which let's just compare them size wise. Because Max Holloway, he's got, he's very much got got a very narrow frame. Calvin Cater's is slightly, slightly broader. So what, yeah, I mean, it's, there's a there's a three inch advantage in reach. And that's probably nothing to do with arm length. That's probably to do with width of shoulders. Um, okay, let's quickly rattle through this UFC stats page right now. So Max Holloway, 21 and six, Calvin Cater, 22 and four. So, you know, similar experience. Obviously, Max Holloway's experience has played out at the top of the division for a, a good period of time. Um, average fight time, 1436 for Max Holloway, 1205 for Calvin Cater. But that, again, you know, Max Holloway spent a lot of time contending at the top of the division, which means that he's been having title fights and, and five round fights. Uh, Calvin Cater, I believe, was was new to five rounds um, in the Danny Ige fight. Let me just confirm that so I'm not lying to you. Yes, that was his first five round fight. So it was good that he had five rounds under his belt and that he went the distance because um, we know he's got it. But Max Holloway, it's, 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 it's an afterthought. You don't even consider whether Max Holloway's got five rounds of conditioning because <laughs> we know full well he has. So that's why his average fight time slightly longer. Both 5'11", both going to come in on championship weight at 145. The, the difference in reach is three inches. Um, and Calvin Cater's just got slightly broader shoulders, I feel. They both use the full extent of their reach. Um, and both both are quite happy to switch, you know, switch through stances to land a power shot. But Calvin Cater... Um, yeah, he's just he's just got a bit more of a bit more of a reach on his punches, and I think that that long left hook from the right hand will be useful. Long long uppercut, long right hook, and just kind of pepper Holloway from a distance and try and get him to to, to rush in. Um, significant strikes, uh, strikes under per minute. So both of them with a decent output, but obviously Max Holloway with with a much higher output. And again, if you look at those stats and how those strikes are distributed, they're much heavier distributed towards the later rounds and this is a five round fight which is why I keep talking about this because I think these guys are going to need the full 25 minutes to dance um, they're both tough as nails and it'd be very surprising for me to see either of them stopped early um, I just don't think either of them are particularly uh, fast starters and because neither of them are characteristically known for that I don't think either of them are going to be 
trying to put their own foot on the gas to, to, to make it uncomfortable. I think they're going to enjoy the process of fighting each other, <laughs> as strange as that sounds. Um, okay. Strikes absorbed per minute, slightly less for Max Holloway, slightly more for Calvin Cater. But you've got to think how that stat was affected by the Moicano fight. Um, and, and then his defense is slightly lower, as you, as you would expect from that. But at the same time, you know, he's never been knocked down in the UFC. Um, it's got a hell of a chin on him. And Max Holloway's not known for his devastating punches. He's known for eroding his opponents over five rounds and wearing them down. Um, okay, grappling, how does this compare? So takedown average, uh, slightly more for Calvin Cater, but again, I don't really think this is going to be much of a grappling affair. Takedown accuracy is higher for Max Holloway, but obviously he's not doing it too much. Takedown offense is good for both. Max Holloway is the submission threat in this fight as opposed to Calvin Cater. A any groundwork from Cater is much more ground and pound, um, uh, you know, top control beating people up. Uh, he, he loves he loves the fight aspect of it. Um, whereas Max Holloway's bolstered his striking game with a good guillotine, mainly because... You know, he was finding himself throwing long flurries of punches, so there was time for people to level change underneath. You know, like I said, he's not a devastating knockout puncher. So uh, he has to add other facets to his game to keep him in that range because he's not switching people off with one shot. So the first thing, obviously, is takedown offense. The second thing is a good guillotine. Um, and we've seen that. I mean, look, the, the Cub Swanson one was like sickening. You could see the panic on Cub's face when he was tapping, how tight that was. Um, Okay, so I think I've covered everything with that. I mean, I think I think this fight quite clearly plays out, you know, at a steady pace. You know, both of these guys are quite smart, intelligent, technical fighters. They're both well conditioned and both very tough. Um, I, I don't think either are gonna, either going to be in a particular hurry to do anything spectacular. And I think Max Holloway is going to enjoy the fact that he's not fight facing someone that's that's going to try and put his foot on the gas in the first round, which is going to bring a you know a, a great third, fourth, and fifth round out of these guys. Calvin Cater is definitely someone to keep an eye on, though. Uh, I know he's not got the same top flight experience as Max Holloway, um, but he's got heavy hands and he's got a very a very educated skill set. Um, uh, and good footwork and honestly you can do so much damage in a division with good feet and good uh, and good boxing so uh this will be an exciting one and it's the first one to kick off fight island so uh, i'll be sitting octagon side buzzing for this one enjoy the fights see you next time